So this is going to be the answer for the Cardano ADA homework, where you guys need to identify the market structure on the daily chart and do a full analysis and see like what where is price realistically going to hit. So starting off on the daily chart, we just got a breaker structure recently. So structure is definitely bearish. Like not only did you get this breaker structure, but you got this one, this one, and this one as well. So immediately price is bearish at the moment. And this was the key level that was taken out. Because if you look on the daily chart, right, it, it sort of goes like this. So you can see that both the key swing lows has been taken out. This is a, clearly a breaker structure. This is not considered a change of character or like a minor breaker structure. So price immediately to the naked eye is bearish. And so this is the level that I'm looking for price to target, which is the one day demand uh, back here, right? You can even say that this is not a one day demand and you can narrow it down to an order block, right? This is a one day order block. For those of you who've taken Wednesday's lesson, you should be able to identify this. So I'll just put in 1D bullish order block. And that's the level that I believe that it can target. And so before that happens, there are three relatively equal lows here. So this becomes another key level as well, because remember what I said about relatively equal lows being very high in liquidity right there. So if price, I believe, Price will target the relatively equal lows first before continuing upwards. But just because there is a one day bullish order block over here, which acts as sort of, you know how there is a void of liquidity over here, right? Like if I just go back, you can see that there is a void of liquidity over here. This is what's known as a fair value gap. So right after the void in liquidity, the first level where you get, you know, liquidity support is in the form of a bullish order block. So in my sincere belief, I think that price is going to be attracted to here it's going to wick just a bit lower market makers are going to seem make it seem like oh you know it just wick lower or whatever but actually it's filling in the order block where they can fill in their positions to reprice the market higher so basically i think that on the high time frame structure is immediately bearish but has potential to be bullish after it's done being bearish and this is the immediate key level that needs to be broken for structure to become bullish so everything here will be invalidated if this structure gets broken with a, you know, a breaker structure with a body close above it. Remember what I said about identifying breaks of structure. And the target for that is going to become this bearish order block over here on the one day chart, right? Now, if structure becomes bullish though, I believe that this is going to be the target level as well as the bearish order block. You might get rejected here for a bit, but ultimately this is going to be the target because this is just where the liquidity is located at the moment. And you just come back into a one day supply zone plus the golden pocket. Now, what do I mean by golden pocket? It, I'm making this video at the time after I've taught the lessons of week two, day two. So you guys should know what I'm talking about when I'm saying the golden pocket. If you haven't, um, go watch, go watch the lecture. It's so freaking valuable. It's not even funny. So golden pocket over here, right? You got rejected at the 0.618 right there. That's what I mean when I say golden pocket. And this is the previous daily high that is apparent on the daily chart. So these are the key levels on the daily and we've identified that it is, you know, looking bearish compared to bullish. Now we go into the four hourly and see if there is anything that can confirm our theory or perhaps change our bias. And at the moment, if we just look at recent key levels, I don't see any kind of order block that we could utilize. You could say perhaps this one that price just filled. And so that's why it's pumping at the moment. But then at the same time, you have a four hourly supply over here and that price is getting rejected. So basically price is within a range right now. And you guys know how I feel about ranges. They are just things to engineer liquidity before the ultimate real move. Now, I met, somebody mentioned this in the premium Q&A where he asked me like, hey, what is the point of ranges? If they just want to bring the markets lower, why can't they just bring it lower? And my answer to that is, well, there's not enough liquidity to, to just bring the markets down lower, like in one move, no matter how big you are. That's why you need to engineer liquidity. So what happens in a range is that retail traders immediately start thinking, oh, this is resistance. And so they would short resistance and they would go long on support, which is true. That's what you're supposed to do. It's just you need to know when you need to stop doing that or do it in a way that won't get you stopped out when they do the liquidity hunt. So what happens in a range is that when they keep it in a tight consolidation, they're going to get trader interest, right? Because most people are very, very impatient. They want things to happen in the market all the time. 
And so they understand that by keeping the market in a range, they're going to get people to start taking bets. What happens when people start taking bets? You get an abundance of stop losses that build up here, and you get an abundance of stop losses that build up here. And so the ultimately that's liquidity, right? Remember how in lesson one, I taught about how liquidity is used as fuel to move the markets. And so currently we are in a range situation here. And so in my opinion, like you can see, this is a micro range and this is the macro range, right? Macro range, and this is the micro range. So what I'm looking to do is I'm going to want to look for a short once these relatively equal highs are taken out and targeting at least the relatively equal lows, which is what you're supposed to do when you're trading a range. But I'm going to get into more of this in a bit. The other one that I could use is remember I said earlier on the daily chart that this needs to be the level to be taken out if you want to confirm bullish. But most of the time, if you do take this level out, you're going to it's just going to be a wick, in my opinion, because you're going lower. So all my bias on the higher time frame at the moment is towards the downside. So if price takes this level out, I'm going to look for a short. I'm not going to set the limit over here, as I've taught in the lessons, set alerts, not limits. So, but I'm just, and especially with shit coins, it's even more important that you don't set limits because the thing about shit coins, right, is they have very low liquidity, which means that once a level has been taken out and you get a lot of people like getting stopped out, getting liquidated or whatever, there's going to be an influx of liquidity and the market debt just, the market just doesn't have enough debt to handle that much liquidity. And like what you tend to get is, price just wakes really high above the price before ultimately going in the direction that you already knew it was going to. So in this case, I would just run a manual stop, go at a smaller position and just see how it goes, you know, or setting the benefit of setting alerts, not limits is that you can monitor how the market structure shifts in the lower time frame. You get a market structure break and then you get a retrace back into an order block. Bam. That's an easy entry. If you don't know what that, like what I'm talking about there, week one and week, I mean, trade day one and day two from week two, We'll put that all together for you, all right? So uh, relatively equal highs is a key level. So I'm just going to mark that out. These are relatively equal highs. Uh, not only that, but this is a supply zone as well. And so that's trait number one that I'm immediately looking at. And that's trait number two. And my target for this time is actually going to be all the way down here, right? Remember, your higher time frame exists and you use the higher time frame to identify areas where you can take profit at. So for example, if you're just trading on the four hour, four hourly and the one hourly. Yeah, sure. You know, just, just short here and take your profit here. That makes absolute sense. But now that you've understood the higher time frame bias, why not? You know, but again, it really depends on what is your execution and what is your, like, what are you trying to execute? Are you trying to catch a swing trade? Are you trying to catch a short term trade? It all depends. Ultimately, like the trade that works for you is the trade that is within your plans, right? You don't have to force things too much. So zooming into that daily bullish order block, we can further identify that there is a fair value gap here. So this is a four hour fair value gap, which price can be attracted to. And right underneath the fair value gap, we can see that there is some kind of an order block over here and we have relatively equal lows over there. So these are relatively equal lows. So this is, in my opinion, like if price were to come to any of these levels, I would be looking for longs on all three of these levels, just as key levels. So what I would do is I would set alerts set an alert, set an alert, and I would set an alert. I would even set an alert into the bullish order block over here, because remember what I taught you, set alerts, not limits. And this is why I recommend you to get the Pro Plus subscription so that, you know, you have 100 alerts to play with. There is no way I can do what I do without being able to set alerts. So that alone makes it worth it. And if you want to start taking trading seriously, you're really going to want to set alerts. Like it's just a bunch of alerts here. And so once price does something, I'll be notified of it and I can see what I want to do, you know? So that is a full hourly analysis. And now we go into the one hourly to see if we can frame a trade. So again, nothing really changes from four hours to one hour. I'm still going to frame it here and here. Oh, wait, I think for Cardano, I didn't even, I didn't even um, ask you guys to do one hour, but you know, I'm just going to do it for the sake of it anyways. Um, I will take a trade long once this key level has been taken out. Probably not targeting all the way up here because it's a counter trend trade. I really know the higher time frame is going lower. So what I would do is I would take a long, but I would target. I'll draw a fib on this range right here and I'll mark out the 0.5. So the 0.5 is over here. So the 0.5 indicates that that is a mid range of the range. So uh, that's where I would target for just a quick bounce. Not going to be greedy and hold on to the position, but if in the event that it does go higher and I miss the initial short entry, I'm go I'm still going to like short here, right? Notice how I'm planning like 10 steps ahead here. I know basically everything that needs to be known about this chart 
And that is the way that I urge you guys to think about the market as well, which is thinking in terms of a grand strategist. Like when you're a chess player or a grand strategist, you don't just try to plan one move ahead and just react accordingly. Um, if you can map out the terrain, understand what the enemy army is, you know, just that kind of strategy stuff, you're going to do a lot better. But of course, you don't make predictions. As you can see, I'm still with, I still stand by what I teach, which is read and react. You never try to predict because the markets is just a game of probabilities and well, there's no certainties basically. So I can also take another counter train trade once price hits this level, I can go for a bit of a bounce, but ultimately just understand that the momentum is towards the downside. And especially because there are relatively equal lows here, uh, that is a huge, huge liquidity area. So this is the power of jumping onto the higher time frame first, identifying what are those levels before going into the lower time frame, you will get so much more conviction and you will understand exactly where you can take profits and exactly where the price is trying to target on a higher time frame. And I might, I might actually just remove both of these alerts because I accidentally moved them. But yeah, this is the analysis on ADA and hopefully you guys have more of an insight as to how I approach doing an analysis on the markets and preparing myself for anything that happens in the market. Now, this all takes just 10 minutes. Like if I wasn't talking, this would just take five minutes. And that's what I mean when I say like in this program, I'm going to teach you how to make a really good living trading with just 30 minutes a day. Like in 30 minutes a day, once you get good at this, in 30 minutes, you can look through five charts, to five to 10 charts, immediately understand what is good, what is bad, what is interesting, what is not. And you'll be able to frame your trades. And I guarantee on a daily basis, you're probably going to find something to trade. Not that I not that I advocate for trading every single day, but you get the idea. So this is my ADA answer. Hope this helps. Cheers.